Hello, I'm Justin Freed. This is episode 82 of In 30. I like the even-numbered shows better, so this is going to be uh, a really good one. It's going to be epic, because Heim of HeimTime.com Hello, hello. is going to try to convince me to get rid of iOS on my main device, and Harry of CuriousRat.com Hello. is going to valiantly defend the operating system that I have had in my pocket since the summer of 2007. So I will get started by talking about what is sitting on my desk right now, my uncovered, unsheathed iPhone 5, which I'm really, really happy with in a lot of ways. Um, I didn't purchase it until the Evasion team released a really easy-to-use jailbreak. I wanted my 5 icon dock. I wanted NC settings and a whole slew of other things that as I've looked more into it, seem to be built into Android from the get-go. And the more I try to, to, to cram my use of Google services into iOS, the more upset I get about it and how difficult it is. So, Haim, what is your idea for how we're going to... Uh, are we going to tally this up? What are we, what are we, what are we, what we were explaining it before we started recording. What are we going to do to figure out if I'm going to switch my iPhone 5 for a Nexus X? And by that, I mean a Nexus something. Well, well, first we're going to have Harry explain why we're doing this topic now because there's a few articles on that. And we put a whole bunch of links in the show notes about the other, more of the same. But in our second segment, I'm going to ask you for an app. I'm going to say, what is your browser of choice? And you're going to look at your phone and you can't lie and you have to tell us which one you use. And I'm going to bet that the majority of them are going to be either non-native iOS clients, or they're going to be exactly the Google counterpart. Okay. All right. So, right. So, okay. So, Harry, first, have you ever seen Haim be so involved in the show notes before? He seems to be obsessing over them this time, right? Yeah, I, he's, a, he's a busy little monkey today. It's, I know. Uh, he's, it's nice to see. And it, it, it saves me, though, the hassle of having to track these links down or keep know, all the tabs is, open. He is just copying and pasting left and right. Okay. But so, anyway, I'll yeah, so... Switching. What happened was uh, on Macworld and TechHive, which is a, a spinoff created by the guys at Macworld Magazine, um, the, a couple of articles made the rounds. One was by Andy Anatko, who people might know from the Chicago Sun-Times. He's their tech reviewer, and also from MacBreak Weekly. He's a, a commentator on that uh, podcast on the Twit Network. He's switching to Android. He had... You know, he's a tech reviewer. He's a gadget guy, so he gets every new phone that comes out, and he gets to test it for a month or two. And then he goes back to his iPhone. His iPhone, ever since the first one, he's been an iPhone user ever since the first one. Well, lately, he's noticed that Google, that specifically the Samsung Galaxy S3 he's been using, has had more features, you know, it's it's more tailored to his workflow, or he's, his habits have adjusted to the S3. So he said, you know what, iOS doesn't have what I want anymore, so I'm going over to the S3. So he's got this three-part epic story arc going on um, why he switched and what he's doing to migrate his stuff over. So you I forgot to mention spoiler alert because I did not listen to that Mac Break Weekly and I did not know what his choice was. <laughs> That's what I was just oh, going well, to ask. It, this, this, wasn't even, this wasn't even in Mac Break Weekly. The article on Macworld is why I switched from an iPhone to Android. Oh, if that's the title, Haim. I don't believe that Harry spoiled anything, right? No, there's, it, I didn't spoil anything. Well, there was another article. This one isn't so much a switching article, but a, an experiment one. Um, Lex Friedman at Macworld is using a, um, a Lumia 920 running Windows Phone 8 for a month to see how the experience goes. So he's already got the first article, week one, out, mm -hmm. um, and just listed a couple of basic differences between the two platforms. Okay, so Inako then, like me, has been using an, an iOS device since 2007, it sounds like. And he... I don't have the, the uh, luxury of having tons of Android devices to test out, to throw in my pocket, to use for a week or two. When I, if I make the switch, it's going to be permanent and it's going to kind of be on faith that Google's going to keep trumping iOS going forward. And and part of the reason that I, I'm, I'm becoming willing to do it is that I think that more and more of my life is in the cloud. And Steve Wozniak, who we interviewed more than a year ago now on In30, acknowledged that Android is ahead of iOS in many ways. It's the first time he said it outright. And not that his word is gospel, but he uses all the devices also. Um, and he kind of has, um, you know, a, a sure soft spot in his hot heart for Apple. So 
why should I, you know, stick it out with iOS? You know, I, if, if if Wozniak himself look, is if saying, it's if it's all personal preference, if iOS isn't isn't cutting it for you anymore, then switch to what works. I I I am beyond the you know oh my god I can't believe you don't use platform you know platform X you you absolutely have to use it. it it's a matter of taste. If you don't use, if you prefer Windows over Mac, fine. If you prefer Mac over Windows, I don't really care. Do do whatever makes you happy. So, so I, I don't, I don't think that that's like a great out though, because first of all, lots of things that are up for debate are matters of preference, and they're and and when and and when you contextualize them to a specific task, you can make it objective, right? So, oh, if, absolutely. And look, if you're, so, you're so if so if I'm if I'm if I'm a Gmail guy. And I'm forcing myself to stay in iOS because I'm familiar with it, and because I've I've invested a lot in the ecosystem by buying Angry Birds and whatnot, and spent you know ten dollars uh, on coins and Plants vs Zombies or something. If I'm sticking with it because of that, uh, against the evidence that says that the Gmail experience is altogether better on Android, then there, there's something that we can debate. There's 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 a right or wrong about it within certain features, you know. Oh, absolutely! Look, and you're you and and Haim are Google guys. You know, you're you you're not an Android user yet, but you use Gmail, you use Google Reader, you use um, all the Google apps that are out there. So you're in that ecosystem. It would make sense for you to switch over to Android because iOS, no matter how good it is, is never going to have the level of integration Google does with Android, you know, the Google's apps do with Android. So it's it's a no-brainer. It's like if I was a Hotmail user, I would switch to Windows Phone in a heartbeat because that would be my, you know... So well, is it, the, 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 wait, hold on. on. The problem is, it, and I've said this numerous times when people get their Android phone, I really wish that the salespeople says, before you buy this phone, please expect that you will be using Android going forward. You will be using Google. And if you're gonna you can do it with Yahoo, you can do it with Hotmail, you can do it with anything else, but to get the best experience you must use Gmail. And people don't realize that. Oh and that that's a negative that's a huge, huge negative for a lot of people. Where the good thing is with iOS is that it there is an independence there that you can say, bring your own email, bring your own contacts, bring this, bring that. You're just bounded by iTunes. Okay, well, they, so not only iTunes, but you're saying that you're that it has the clout to be cross-platform. That Google is going to develop a Maps app that's really robust for iOS. Of course, they're going to do it for Android too, but they're never going to do it for Windows Phone. So iOS gets the best of both worlds. It's it's more cross plat it's more cross-platform compatible potentially than Android will ever be. Right, and that's a business decision for Google because Google gets a lot of its ad revenue from iOS users. I mean, that's a that's a no-brainer. But what you were saying before about People telling people, you know, be expected to use Android going forward. That goes for any platform. If you buy apps on any platform, there's lock-in right there. If you're an iCloud user, there's lock-in right there. No, no, no. Well, like the example is, my uh, aunt just got an Android phone, and she's like, "Oh, they have to move my contacts, and I have to set up my email. Oh, and then they made me set up this Gmail account. I don't. I'll never use it." And I go, "No, it, you should use it. You should put in contacts. It'll just pull the contacts from the cloud." And she's like, "Oh, that takes too long. I really don't want to do that. They're gonna for ten dollars move it to the SIM card, and then we get to this smartphone features with the dumb phone usability." So wait, the first I'd like to say that I think it's it, I still kind of chuckle to myself when people talk about how difficult it is to move contacts around as if like they have to actually expend energy to move like the CSV from one, you know, place to another or you know, it, it's 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 not so hard, right? Uh, well, my my wife is a perfect example. She she has a, a what would be considered a dumb phone. It's a flip phone. She doesn't want a smartphone. She doesn't want the hassle of having to manage contacts and and web apps and or, or apps and the website and all that nonsense. But when she loses her dumb phone, she'll have no one's phone number. Well, yes, and that's a that's a risk she's willing to take. But she doesn't she doesn't feel the need for a smartphone. And there are plenty of people who don't necessarily want the whole package for a smartphone. They don't want the Gmail account. They literally just want to surf the internet and check their email. So let, let me let me take us back a little bit. It sounds like earlier, Harry, you were acknowledging when I was talking about contextualizing the debate to certain tasks that the the prima facie, I feel like I'm getting a little too technical, like not even not technical, tech, like, like legalistic or something, but the most important thing that a person ought to have in mind when they when they choose a platform is what 
cloud they're in already. Like, is, 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 are you acknowledging that 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 right off the bat? If you if you are a heavy Gmail user and you are getting your first smartphone, you you just should go to Android because of that. That that is the is, is that that consideration reigns supreme. Oh, yeah. I mean that's that, that's such a they, you know if you're I'm I used to be a heavy Gmail user and I bought an iPhone I that's and I stayed on the iPhone it it's a really it's a matter of choice it's a matter of what people you know use if everybody you know uses an Android phone and they're saying hey you should get this it's great then go with an Android phone uh, but if you're looking for a specific kind of thing if you're looking for ease of use consistency stability I'm gonna say flat out get an iPhone the, there's there's no other choice. Android's great. Android's gotten a lot better, and every time I see Google Now on Heim's Nexus, uh, it I, I say to myself, man, I kind of wish I had that. It's it's actually a really great feature. Same thing with Windows Phone. Every time I see certain features on that, I want to switch over. But it's, Like what? Just the tiles or something? What is it? I really like the live tiles. Um, I love the animations. It's a fast... Even on slow hardware, that operating system is fast. The, okay. the, the, the focus Let's I have is an old yeah. phone, and it's a fast... Oh, time, where are we time wise? We're at eleven minutes. Okay, so okay, so let's let's we'll rein this in some, and and then we'll talk about the specific uh, options that people have when they're trying to use Gmail on an iPhone or uh, I don't know Hotmail on their Android phone, whatever. We'll get into that. But for me, a guy like me who's been on iOS for a really long time, there I I have this burning resentment kind of of Apple that they don't open anything to be on other platforms even though it's it's a totally viable thing to do and even though they've claimed that they're going to do it. So well, what are you looking for? FaceTime and iMessage, the fact that I can't use those things, I can't use those services on an Android phone and thus stay connected with my family who it, who I want to be on iOS, I think is a pain in the ass especially since te- you know app.net some developer recently um, released a method for using the iMessage API to to send app.net messages. Oh yeah, but, it's uh Steve Strez, the it's called Project Amy. We'll put a link in the show notes. So so that that's possible and I would like I guess maybe I shouldn't resent the Apple engineers for not doing it. I should be upset with the uh, Android community for not bringing FaceTime and iMessage to Android in some way that I if if they did that, I would drop it. I I would well, I, will say, I will drop iOS right away. You have every right to be upset at Apple for not opening FaceTime because they said we want to make this an open standard. We want FaceTime on everything and they didn't they never opened it up. So obviously, yeah, that was their their boner. But it, what does that mean? Is it a boner a good thing? No, a, a boner is a screw up. It's a, uh, a, a yeah, it's a, a bad thing. Oh, uh, 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 that's bad. Did you mean boner or no? You, no, boner. no, I'm, no. A boner is a good thing. Not turning Fine. this into a political podcast. Okay. Uh, but uh, the the iMessage thing that's sort of like saying I wish BBM was on my Android phone. I, Here, it, here's why it's not because. There's there's a specific element of BBM that requires a centralized location, like a centralized service to to encrypt and decrypt the things, and it's based around a piece of hardware in the Blackberries themselves. That's 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 the nature of the encryption. iMessage that is simply not the case for. If it works in OS 10, by virtue of that, I can install OS 10 on OS on on any x86 hardware and get iMessage to work. Therefore, it's it's not dependent on that type of centralized, you know, system. It Apple could do it. But no, well, they could do it, but that would be a, a poor business decision. That's part of the lock in. They want you to buy an iPhone and an iPad and and uh, a Mac because iMessage only runs on all of those things. It sounds like it sounds like if it's like if I, I know why the, uh, if you if you let a bird out of the cage and it returns then it's really your bird. If 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 people can make a choice to But if you blow chunks and she <laughs> and she I, goes I, then it was never meant to be. You know I, like I, I don't I feel like I'm blowing chunks then having to stick with with iOS because of that lock and don't don't in principle I really doesn't Tim Cook want people to make the decision not based on the lock in like isn't that when the, the real fight comes out between the, the who has the best features no apple's all about lock in they've always been it's all about the integrated ecosystem for them so for, same thing with the apps you can't run android apps on ios and vice versa you buy an app on ios you run it on ios so that that's not that is not a technical limitation per se i mean that, sure there's objectives well there's different architecture well steve right. jobs once said why would we have apps we're just going to Use the web. That's true. I, there is no lock-in. Okay. So, but the, the, this that lock-in is like a bit is a business decision. You, Apple's the one that facilitates the payment to the app developers in that marketplace, and the same is true for Google Play or 
whatever Blackberry's thing is called. So the, I'm okay. World. I'm, is that really what it is? It sounds uh, like Black Apple World, I think, is what it was called. Uh, it sounds like an amusement park or something. Or like, let's where move on. Actually, let's, actually, let's move. Park. So, what are we going to do? Hein, you're the one that you have this idea okay. about how we're going to take. You're going to keep score and da 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 da, da and make. And, and you're are you you going to try and convince me? I will. I will. I will put up four hundred bucks if you convince me. I will. I will give them the iPhone five to, to someone in my family, and I will move to a Nexus something. Well, let's can, let's start. What is on? What is your browser? What is your default browser? I use Safari. I do. There is there a specific reason? The reason I use Safari is that although the feature set for Chrome on iOS is, is far and away better, um, it uses the Safari rendering engine ultimately. So it's just gonna it's got to be a little slower than Safari because it's it's kind of when you re use a web page, it is effectively loading Safari with the Chrome skin on it. Um, well, and you have the syncing also. Remember, right? The syncing. Oh, if, if the if the syncing the works, if the password syncing does work more or less, and it signs me into Google Sites automatically, but it, this, the password syncing is not as as robust to throw that word out there again as it is on Android. So I, I it doesn't work as well, and it's a pain in the ass to have to type in tons of passwords uh, all the time. I I'm getting a little sick of it, and I, I don't know. The Chrome might be better. I'm just it's a speed issue for me. Okay, next phone. Well, Harry, what do you use? Do you do you, have you used Chrome on iOS? I do. I use Chrome every now and then. I I mainly stick with Safari because it's built in. When you tap a link in a, a message or something, it automatically opens to Safari. So we we discussed a, a couple of shows ago that Google changed the Google Plus app to allow you to open links from Google Plus into Chrome, and I think they're going to do that. And they've done it since with Gmail. And there are jailbreak tweaks to do the same thing. It's just that. They're not perfect. Certain links and certain no. places won't open, you know, to, to Chrome. It'll go to Safari. I don't, certain app.net apps I've noticed, I think Felix does this, um, or at least Repost does. I could be mistaken. But you can actually open links in these app.net clients in one password, so, which is really great because then you can go. So what happens is you open it up in one password, and if you open up, a, you know, like your Facebook you. login or whatever, It'll automatically populate your password and take you into the the web page, which is really nice. All right, so Heim is telling us in the chat that we have to do rapid fire. Okay, I'm I'm into that. Go Heim, go. Okay, phone, your phone dialer. Okay, so one of the reasons I this is this is one that goes right to Google. One of the re things that I was happy with with my jailbreak on iOS five was that I could use the built-in phone app to dial out with my Google Voice number. But the developer of that jailbreak app that did that just for for, for phone and for texting, hasn't updated it for iOS 6 yet. So I'm going back to using the Google... I use the Google Voice app much more than I use the built-in um, uh, you know, iOS version, and I can't yet use Siri with the Google Voice app, which is kind of annoying, but I prefer to use my Google Voice number to keep track of the calls and to transfer it from my phone to my computer. So Google wins out on that one, they, they, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, contacts. Car, uh, CardDAV or uh, the other one? Maybe. Okay, so... Okay, so I just recently switched from Exchange to CardDAV, um, but I use Google. I use I don't use iCloud for my contacts because I'm never in iCloud. So if I want to type an email, I want the address to populate in Gmail, and I want it to populate on my phone. So the contact syncing is is Google all the way. It is. Okay, I, I know the answer to this one, but email. What's your email client of choice? See, you're wrong. You think that I use the Gmail client? I don't. I use the built. I I, I use Mail app. I do. Use your Mail app. What but, does Harry use? He, I use mail.app, and you know what? I'm not a huge, I'm not a power email user. I'm a big deleter. But the one thing I, I wish the app will let you do, or a, honestly any mobile operating system, was install plugins. Because I use mail tags on mail.app on my Mac, which allows me to tag all my messages in uh, certain ways, which lets me find query letters or resumes from months ago. If I could do that on my iPhone, it would can. make it a lot more useful to me. You you can with the Gmail app. The thing yeah, but I don't use Gmail. All my email now is in Mobile Me or right, iCloud but, or and, whatever. And that's the problem. It's not anything local. The problem is in the cloud. And when the cloud rains down acid rain, it's going to burn you on your iPhone and it's going to burn you on your your MacBook Air. Is that a too bad an analogy? The the <laughs> the, 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 the the thing is the I the search with Mail app using the IMAP standard for search is not sufficient for me. I frequently turn to the Gmail app for searching through all my messages. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, 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 on, on Mail.app on the Mac, it, with Mail Tags built in, it's great because the that Mail Tags is actually built in right into the search bar, so it works really well. Uh, so what I end up doing on the on the iPhone or the iPad is just moving everything in a to file or an action folder for later triage because I can't do anything with them while I'm on my phone. Well, the triage is, is moving them into that action folder. Then the yes. later thing. Yes, third. Right, Next right, one. Right. Oh, yeah. Here's the Next big one. one. Maps. Okay. Apple Maps when they work look better than Google Maps. They don't work. They do not work. I cannot tell you how often. I tried to use Siri to to I to you and use Apple Maps. I gave it a go after we you know we did that show with with the fellow who's on another podcast, the guy from Harry. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was like called I O. It's called I have uh, uh, iOS six. Where am I or something? Anyway, after the fifth time of being brought to the middle of nowhere using the proper address with. Apple Maps, and then having to op- open Google Maps to get me the rest of the way, I was I said screw it. This I don't care how it it looks nice. It doesn't get me to where I want to go, and it literally happened five times. Yeah, I my my default go to is Google Maps. I love Apple Maps, and the only time I ever find myself using it is if I'm in the car or if I'm lost, and the first thing I want to do is get out of where I am. So find me a way home from here. I will say that into Siri. And it'll pop open Apple Maps with a root Siri, home. save my life! Pretty much, yeah. Siri, get me the hell out of here. <laughs> so, let's go next. Socks. So wait, what, one more thing about the, with, uh-huh. about the uh, about the maps. It, I don't really care how good it looks at some level, and it's it's uh, Apple missed the mark on that. It, it's 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 bad. It's it's bad. It pisses me off. It's honestly, I think Google's even a little faster. It it might be. I mean. But it, it works. But it's just, it, it, it hits the nail on the head that you actively stop. In Siri, you use Apple Maps to get out of wherever you are, but then you make a conscious choice to open the link. Right. In if I'm if I'm iOS first getting into the car and plotting my route, I'll go into Google Maps first. And I drive to places I've never been all the time. That is like very important that my GPS works, and I have all my contacts matching up contacts with addresses to drive to places that I, to, to their their location. Something I do all the time, and Apple Maps doesn't parse it as well. It's it's it's, it's yeah weird. yeah. But if I'm stuck in traffic or there's a construction detour and I don't have time to search through Google Maps, I'll just say into Siri, find me a way home, and it'll so, do it. So stocks, you were saying, I'm yeah. Next are stocks, default or something else. Okay, I, don't even I care. I, I I the way I manage my portfolio, I don't. I purposely do not check the stocks during the day. I only get alerts from Schwab via email, so I don't. I it's a wash. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, your uh, this is your. Vo- I'm assuming you've played with Google now, but your voice launcher. So is that? Would you rather Siri or voice the Google now? There, there is. I use a jailbreak app that lets me touch the screen with three fingers. That brings up the Google uh, search by voice thing. Ooh. It's um much better, even for the questions that Siri is pretty good at, like what is the age? Of, how old is Tom Cruise? G- Google. The thing is that. Google reads the answer back to you. Siri still says, here is the answer to that question. I mean, go the step further and say, Tom Cruise is 77 years old and a Scientologist. I mean, like, I cannot fathom why that's not built in. And that's pr- half of what I want is, is the, the voice feedback. So if I'm at my desk, it's kind of cool. I, I, can, I can do it. And I, I touch it with three fingers. The Google voice search comes up, and it does it all for me. So the, for the if, if Google voice search were built in as well as Siri, I would – Far and away, choose Google Voice Search. From the little bit I've used of Google's Google's search on its Android phones, I think the natural language processing is better on Siri. Um, but Siri should be able to do certain simple things that it doesn't, like redial. Exactly. I, you try redial, it says, I'm sorry, I can't redial phone numbers. Well, why the hell not? It, 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 it's built to tell you it can't do it, but it, it, I mean, just do it. What, yeah, I, that boggles the mind. And also, I've been running into few. I, it might just be where I am on the highway, but I've run into situations where I'll speak something into Siri, and it'll just spin the pink dial around. I know it's infuriating, right? You want to? If I if I see someone's iPhone be launched out of their car on the Jersey Turnpike, that's I drive awesome. three exits. It's like I could have done it already. Yeah. So it and that's there's still no local voice processing on iOS. Which Google does have. Right. You, it, well, you, well, let's move on. We got four right. more All in right, five huh? minutes. We have like your cloud Lincoln. drive. Where oh, would you I, rather I, store your cloud storage in? Dropbox. Well, look. Okay. I use Google Drive. I like it because it's, it, it's integrated with my task manager, with my contacts, et cetera, et cetera. 
I wish Google Drive. I, I, I no one uses. I, I, I defy you to, to to show me someone that actually uses Apple services such. And I bet this is even the case at one infinite loop in Cupertino that no one, virtually no one uses pages on their iOS device, pages on their, their laptop or uh, desktop, and thusly uses iCloud for all of their file management. Well, we'll come back to this. Let's finish the three left. Okay. Unless Harry wants to interject for one second. I tried using iCloud uh, for document management, and I had versioning issues. So I let me let, let me say this, Harry. You're you're being a good sport about not being like a, a you you are now. Although I think that the way you got you outed yourself of, from the argument earlier by saying it's just a preference is 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 not a sufficient response. Your attitude, though. Your 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 okay, I SMS. It. SMS and I include uh, Google Messages, iMessage, BBM, Facebook I chat, whatever you cannot, want. Okay, I can't use iMessage because I cannot. Te- I, I use it for for stuff that I don't think I'm going to have to refer back to. But I want to be able to search my SMS results from anywhere. I want to be able to use Cloud Magic to do that from a desktop to get an address or a serial number or a phone number that someone texted me. And with iMessage, if I go to someone else's Mac, how do I do that? If I don't have my phone with me, with with Google Voice, I log into Google Voice, I type in what I want to search for, and it brings it up. I don't, I cannot have my messages locked to the devices like that. It's just, it's not tenable for me. So I use Google, I use Google Voice as much as possible for it. Two more notifications. You've seen it on mine. You've seen it on uh, the the drop down with all that. Which notifications would you like better? I don't, I don't, I all I know is I have heavily customized my notifications. Uh, including how I'm notified by of SMSs using Byte SMS on iOS. I, I, it's okay. I don't mind Notification Center. It's pretty quick. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with yeah. it. Yeah. I... Windows Phone Live Tiles for me. I just, I, I really like them. There's a great. There's, a, there are some g- good jailbreak apps that kind of mirror that experience. And I, and some something that you you had on Curious Rat about how the HTC people realize that people don't really use their widgets. Yeah. Struck up. It's, it's. The live tiles are better. Last one. Last one. We got three minutes. The screen size preference. I agree with Johnny Ive. I I don't I, I my thumb and I've I have pretty big hands, even though I, I am a small gentleman. Um like uh so I, dainty. I know, right? I, if you and also my fingers also I I can do that. Isn't that weird? That's really creepy. I can I I I have I can do more than an octave on a piano. So I have really big fingers, but I I'm cool with the size of this. One of the reasons I this is okay. So, Han, this is what I'm going to throw out there. One of the reasons I only got the 16 gigabyte iPhone 5 is I think I'm going to carry around a Nexus tablet with me. Is that am I? Is that I carry a phone and an iPad, an Android phone and an iPad with me a lot. Okay, so you have so you have iOS and Android with you, and I think I'm that might be what I do because this hardware is I don't I've not touched a phone that beats it. I have no case on it. I'm really rough on it. When I go to sleep, I don't put it on my nightstand. I throw it into the bed somewhere. I wake up in the morning and I go like that with my. Sh- I pull my sheets up. The f- the phone fly. Now they're never going to give me a replacement phone. <laughs> be a warranty, but it's 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 looks good enough. It's 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 held up. I don't think that someone's going to beat the industrial design on this. Your but... most important feature that you need to work all. The Can time. I just to real real quick? Because I'm I'm a large man and I'm I'm six three. <laughs> I have very large hands. For me, the perfect screen size was the Samsung Focus. It was like 4.2 inches, a little wider than the iPhone, and for me, that was ideal. I think they're going to make. I think they're going to make a phone. Less for you. than 90 seconds. What's your most important feature, and then we'll close. I want quick internet access. I do. I want. I want a browser that works really well, fast. Is that what you're getting at? I'm answering your question. Well, if you had to pick one thing, like you couldn't get, you can only pick your one feature to make your decision on. Is it the map? Is it the browser? Is it the phone? Is it Google Voice? App library. Um, I, I, I can do without some of the, the fancy. I, I, we'll, we'll see which, which, which phone I stick to. I hope that Sergey Brin can listen to our podcast and decides to, if he, if he sends me some Nexus device, I will smash my iPhone with us. I mean, I guess I'm not the most iPhone guy, but up there. What, what do you want me to say? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, no, I don't, I don't know. Let's, let's close it up because we've got 40 seconds. 
Heim, wow, Heim is really t- Man, he is taking really, the yeah. reins today. He is. This I is mean, tr- we'll continue this conversation after, but for the sake of the, the episode, show, in the, in this, in this, this, this is what it must be like to be in his classes, guys. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if, it's, if your students are listening, Heim, I hope this. Mr. Cohen, Mr. Cohen, Mr. Cohen, we want extra credit. All right, this has been episode 82 of In 30. I look forward to the day when Heim can convince me to smash my iPhone on camera. Uh, until then, this will be in my pocket. I'm, of course, referring to my iPhone 5. Thanks for listening. Good night. Bye.